Hey guys, so this is kind of like a pillow talk and I'm really like in the bed for the night, I think. Um, I don't think I have anything else to record besides this pillow talk, but a lot of people have been wanting like a life update and a pillow talk and a blah, blah, blah. So I'm here to give it to you. Um, I have a bunch of topics. Well, not a bunch, but I have some topics on my phone that I want to talk about. Whew. I done recorded like five videos today, so maybe it was four. Still a lot. So this video will be long, but y'all be asking like for life updates and comments and stuff like that. And I don't know. I just want to give y'all what y'all asked for. And people like the long videos and some people, you know, were like, you know, you seem down and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not down. I'm really like content right now. If you hear stuff in the background, I'm at home. So it's family doing stuff. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the closet sale and the wig sale. <sighs> just breathe. That's what my wall says. I got a sticker up there that says just breathe because, you know, sometimes you need a reminder to just take a deep breath. So, um, yeah. There was a shipping delay. If you don't know, now you know. All right. Um, I tried to email every customer, even if you didn't purchase anything from that particular sale. I emailed everybody and was like, it's been a shipping delay if you order anything this week. Um, people, I guess, I, I would say one girl, Melissa, and I don't care if I'm saying her name because she really worked my nerves. And um, some people might think that's unprofessional and stuff, but I just felt like... I have no reason to scam anybody. So for somebody to come at me and to say, oh, she's a scammer. This doesn't seem real. I bought this stuff and I don't know what I'm going to receive it. I understand your concerns. I understand your worries. I would be mad too. But what happened? All right. And a lot of people are like, well, you don't got to explain yourself. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? But sometimes you do need to explain yourself because sometimes people need to know. Um, what happened was Wednesday I had the closet sale. Thursday, I transferred the money. I didn't even transfer all the money that I made from the closet sale. I transferred enough that I thought would cover shipping for the clothes that people bought along with the wigs that people bought. Now, the wig sale took place on Friday, right? But I kind of projected in my head. I was like, well, maybe like 10 wigs a sale. So I'll put enough over to cover the um, packages, the 50 packages from the closet sale, along with like maybe 10 packages from the wig sale. I'll put enough money over, just calculate a projection basically. You know, that's what you do when, I mean, you're in business, I guess. You project sales. Okay, so my sister was like cracking up. I don't even know what she was laughing at. But, um, yeah, so I transferred enough money. Well, I transferred what I thought I would need, um, over Thursday before even. You're supposed to transfer it before 7 o'clock Eastern Time in order to get it the next business day. Um, I know they don't work on, um, they don't operate on the weekends, so I knew it wouldn't deposit on Saturday. So I was like, I gotta do it Thursday by 7 o'clock so I can get it Friday and I can ship out the stuff Saturday. Boom. However, took a turn for the worse. <laughs> um, it didn't work out. I actually transferred it over way before, well, not way before, but well before 7 o'clock. Um, but it didn't transfer over by Friday. So I was like, what the fuck is going on? You know, now don't touch my savings and I'm not going to touch my check-ins because that's basically what I saved up for the Miami trip. Um, so I was like, like, huh, you know, I had plans to go to the nail salon Saturday, um, get my nails done for Miami, then go to the, um, post office right after the nail salon and ship out all the packages, but it didn't work that way. Um, a few people did ask, like, oh, you know, what's up with the packages and stuff when they would be shipped out? And I did explain to them. And then I did. And in my head this whole time, I was like, I need to send a formal email, you know, to be professional about the thing. Um, and people, well, this, the one girl I said earlier, she was like, um, oh, you need to take business classes. And honey, I was in the whole business. Not, um, I forgot what you call it, but it wasn't like a fraternity, but it was like a business thing. Um, and that was all throughout high school and then I took business classes. So I'm not worried about all of that. You know, I know how 
do <laughs> you I know what I'm doing when it comes to this, but it's always room for learning, it's always room for improvement. So I'm not gonna say I'm the business expert. But yeah, I did end up sending out a formal email because I knew a lot of people was worried and questioning and stuff like that. So I did send that out the beginning of the week. Um, when I had got around to it, it did take a little bit longer because Saturday night, the whole day I was packing. Sunday, we was on the road for 12 hours. Um, so yeah, I think I sent it out like Tuesday. Whew. Long story short, there was a delay. There was a few people who was mad. Um, blah, blah, blah. You still got, the people still got their packages and that was the end of that. Um, the girl I mentioned earlier, she actually got her package and she filed a claim because when I came back, um, I tossed the receipt by mistake and it had all the tracking numbers on it. Uh, and she wanted a tracking number and I didn't have it. So she was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I just was like, girl, whatever, you know, I really don't have time. Um, or, I mean, I got patience. I have a lot of patience. I have more patience than people think, but I just didn't have time to deal with that. You understand? Like, come on now. You got your packages. And then, like I said, she filed a claim and because I tossed the receipt and I, I learned that lesson, but that was a mistake. I didn't toss it on purpose. Um, she was able to get a refund and she kept the package. So who was the real con artist here? All right, cool. And then there's people who say, oh, well, why are you selling stuff that you get for free? If you know me, you know I shop, you know. I do get a lot of stuff for free. I do do a lot of reviews. Um, the clothes are sent for free, but my time is still put out to actually review the clothes and share with people, you know, how they fit, the nature of the company and stuff like that. Like, you know, we don't. Well, I don't just do YouTube to get free shit. And that's what a lot of people think YouTube is all about. And that's why a lot of people, when they want to start YouTube, or a lot of people, like, around me, they'll be like, oh, I need to be on YouTube so I can get free stuff. Oh, I need... Like, it's not that... It's not for the free stuff. You know, you're... I'm on here, and you're supposed to be on here, you know, to inform people about these companies, whether it's good or bad. And you're supposed to be on here giving your honest opinion, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. But if you're not doing it, I mean, that's your morals, you know, that's up to you. But, um, yeah, and if I decide to sell it, I decide to sell it. You know, shipping alone is a fucking arm and a leg. You understand? The first time I went to the post office and shipped out maybe 80-something packages, fucking shipping was almost $800, okay? All right. The second time I went, I think shipping was like $400. Um, Shipping is crazy, especially, and I use USPS, and I think that's the cheapest I found. Like, UPS and FedEx and shit, like, they're expensive. So, um, yeah. Uh, whatever. So, um, they was like, why you don't give them away or donate them? You don't know what I do, and I don't put everything I do out there. So, um, I give to people who need, you know, I give it to my friends. Uh, I asked my manager, Delary, hey girl, to, uh, send it to, not send it to, but, you know, donate it, Goodwill, wherever you want to take it and stuff. So, you know, don't come at me and don't try to come on here saying, oh, that's just greedy and blah, blah, blah. No, you know, because I don't even sell the clothes for what they're worth. I sell them for between 50 and 85% less, I mean, I guess, percent of what they were. So I take 50 to 85% off. Um, and then on top of that, you know, I, and like somebody said in the comments, girl, you don't got to explain yourself because Goodwill and all these other companies or businesses do the same thing. And I'm just like, you know, but sometimes people need to be checked. So, yeah, you know. Uh -huh. I'm not greedy. You know, I work for everything that I have. And I got to tell people I built everything that I have from the ground up. You know, I really didn't get no help in this. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. I learned as I went along. So the next thing on my notepad, if I can find it. Oh my gosh, it's being called bitch. Now, I'm not really called bitch a lot, but my friend, she uses the word so much. And... People comment like, bitch, yes. So people comment on Instagram and YouTube and like, yes, bitch, yes. And you know, I don't really like that word. <laughs> you know, I don't see nothing. I mean, if you want to call your friends that and stuff, that's cool. But that's just not like a lingo that I use, you know, with my friends. Like, I don't be like, bitch, bitch, guess what? Like, I don't do that. I'm like, girl, girl, let me tell you. That's how I do it, you know, but... The whole bitch thing is just funny to me, but I just think it's, I brought it up because my friend says it and I just was like, why, why you, why you can't just say girl or honey or something. But, um, a lot of people use that word and I'm just like, 
Uh -uh. If I call you a bitch, it's because I'm mad at you, male or female. Like, I'm mad at you and you're really, you're pissed, you pissed me off if I'm calling you a bitch, okay? It's rare that I call people a bitch. So next was, ugh, love life. Um, I'm not going into this. This will take up a whole video. I'm going into it, okay? But I'm not, like, gonna do, I'm not gonna put the whole in depth, you know, situation that happened. But I will say it's Rocky. Um, and this is the same guy I've been dealing with since I think September of last year. Um, it's Rocky. It's real Rocky right now. We went through something a couple months ago, almost two months ago, February, around the time I got my tattoo. Well, it was basically the same day I got my tattoo. Um, we had went together. Shit went down, um, not at the tattoo shop or anything like that. But after that, he had brought me home, and I've learned. I learned some things, and it was like a big. I was like hurt, you know, really hurt. Um, after that, we he wanted to be, rebuild, you know, what we had and stuff like that, and I'm just like um, confused and didn't really know what I wanted to do and. It was, it's just really rocky right now. Um, I mean, that's really all I can say about it. It's just rocky. And recently something else had happened and I just was like, you know, bro, I didn't even get the chance to give you a full second chance yet or confirm your second chance. And then, you know, something else is happening. It's just like, is it even worth trying? Because now you've changed me completely. Um, not just towards you, but towards every guy that I come across from now on, there's going to be some skepticism or something. And it's going to be, my wall was a hundred bricks high and I was 200 bricks higher, you know? So it's some things you have to think about, like, um, is it worth re, is it worth giving it another try and stuff like that? And that's just what I'm going to, um, I guess debate with myself, you know, because, you know, there's no need to be with someone if you you know if it's not there you know or not even if it's not there but if you don't think y'all can get back to where y'all were before so it's i don't want to say it's complicated because that's what a lot of people say but it's rocky it's basically it is complicated um might be over don't really know i haven't made up my mind um but yeah i'm not not feeling it right now. I'll say that. Um, school has been school. I, I'm so ready to graduate. I'm so ready to get up out of here. My projected graduation date, it would have been this year, but I did take a year off. Um, so now it's spring 2018. But I have to actually go see my advisor because it don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get up out of here spring 2018, so I'm hoping that I do because I do not want to be here for any longer than that. And I'm saying here, I'm not even at school right now, but I don't want to be, I'm ready to go. You know, I'm ready to start my life. I'm ready to build my career and everything. Well, continue. Um, I feel like in a lot of these classes now, um, well, a few of these classes, we kind of lack the... Being an artist, you want to be self-expressive and you have a style about you. So when people want you to do things their way, it kind of irks you. But you have to kind of just do it, you know? Um, yeah. So it's like, I want to express myself. I can, but I can't. It's just, I'm ready to graduate so I can do my own thing. Another thing I want to talk about was telling people, all right, so when the thing happened with the lover in February when we got the tattoos, um, I told my circle, you know, so that was a good, I don't really have a big circle. I had a good, I'll say, let me see, a good four people, five people, a good five people. One is my sister in Jersey, and then I have my two best friends, and then my two close friends at school and then of course I told my mom so six people um 
and I told them what happened and stuff and um I kind of wish I wouldn't have told them because when you tell people your business it leaves a bitter taste if you're telling them bitter news you're, it leaves a bitter taste in their mouth about the person you're talking about and you never know if you're going to give that person a second chance and then when that person comes around you and the people you told it's going to be really awkward so I wish I kind of wouldn't have told anybody and dealt with it on my own or told one person and you know um, dealt with it with that person and talked it out with them because you always need somebody to talk to um, and somebody who's there to listen. So, um, yeah, I just, if I could change anything, I would change telling everybody <laughs> in my circle. Um, but yeah, you don't want to leave that bitter taste in people's mouths about a person and you give them a second chance and then um, things are weird now because you told them. Um what else did I want to say? I think that was really it about that. Um, the next thing was, oh, friends stealing your hustle. You know, I put something on Snapchat and I was like, you know, support your friends, something, 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 and stop low key hating on them. I said something like that because um, I just saw it on Instagram and I was like, yeah, truth, facts, post it on Snap. Um, and What's happening right now is I have a friend who wants to start doing something I'm doing. Cool. Um, I don't, however, like, I don't particularly like that, you know, because I feel like I would never take a hustle. Like, if my friend is doing a bake sale every Thursday and she baking these cookies and she making a killing, I'm not going to go behind her and be like, oh, well, I'm going to start doing a bake sale every Thursday, you know, cause so I can make a killing too or whatever, you know, do I feel like everybody got their own thing and I'm not the only person in the world who does certain things. Um, you know, I'm not the only person in the world with the business. I'm not the only person in the world and I know that. But as far as the only person, like, I feel like if you're close to me in my circle, you shouldn't be my competition or you shouldn't try to be my competition when it comes to our business. You know, either find your own hustle or we create a hustle together, you know, or you join my hustle. But don't try to go do the same thing I'm doing and, you know, do it separately. That's just my fact, my thoughts on it, not my facts, but my thoughts on it. Um, and when I said something to my friend about it, not the friend who's trying to do it, but my other friend, she just was like, you know, she, I feel like people think differently. When I talked to my aunt and my mom about it, and you know, we're from Jersey, they had the same outlook as me. And they were like, what the fuck? Hell nah. But when I told my best friend Delaria about it, she was like, well... Something, something, something. You know, she kind of, like, had a whole different aspect. You know, she's from North Carolina. And I'm like I said, I'm not throwing shade towards where you're from or anything like that. But I'm just saying, you know, I see the differences in mindsets. Because it was so easy for me and my mom and them to agree. And then it was so... She was, like, kind of on the other person's side. And the other person from down here, too. So, yeah, I just feel like if Delery sold cookies every Thursday... And she made a thousand dollars a week doing it. I'm not gonna go behind her and try to do it. If anything, I'm gonna be like, "Yo, you need help? Like, you need help with this batch, you know?" So the next thing was um, this whole idea of a plus size community. Um, I don't feel like I'm a part of it, and I heard a, I hear people say this a lot, like plus size YouTubers. They'll be like, "Well, I'm not a part of this," and I'm like. And I'm like the same way, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I don't get invited to these Kirby Con things. I don't um, do these big shoots with all these plus size women, you know, I don't do this. So, um, I mean, I don't feel the sense of community, you know, I have a few, I have several plus size YouTubers that I watch and I, I'm like, I'm friends in my head with a lot of people um, and I comment and come you know, talk to like people like Curviology and um, Curvic and My Thrifted Closet and um, other YouTubers and stuff like that. And I feel like, you know, we cool and we sisters in my head, but um, I don't feel like, you know, everybody is inclusive. And I feel like some people in the plus size community, um, I feel like they even throw shade on plus size people you know they try to be like well plus size I'm plus size and 
we don't need to be wearing crop tops. I'm plus size and we don't need to be wearing that. And I'm plus size and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like you down in people for what? And people of the same community that you're a part of. So it's like, I don't know. I'm solo dolo. Like, not so much solo dolo, like, I'm plus size, you know. I'm a fat woman and I wear big clothes, okay? But I'm just saying as far as this whole sense of community and, um, I'm trying to think of how I can explain it. Clicks, you know, like, you see certain clicks around and I just feel like we don't, you know, I don't know. Another another people I said another people other people I like to uh, watch is like Lace and Leopard and Passion Jones and um uh I'm trying to think I watch so many people and like when I go to name them I can't think like Platinum D and um there's a lot of people and there's a lot of newer YouTubers who I'm glad to be watching now uh and then but yeah I just was like. And I'm not going to say I'm perfect and innocent and when I see some, I don't be thinking certain things like, nah. If I see something in a white dress and I'll be like, dang, yo, some black, a black Spanx would have been perfect under there. You know, I, I'm quick. I'm not perfect. I do that too. But I don't go around and comment, I'm plus size and I wouldn't wear that. I'm plus size and crop tops ain't for us. I'm plus size and my rolls ain't about the, I'm plus size and, you know, I don't do that and I don't think people should do that like let people make their own decisions and if they want to wear a crop top let them wear a crop top like who are you to tell me what to do and to not do but the next thing is the shapewear and the whole see-through clothing thing people some people wear shapewear when they do their try on some people wear like you know shapewear i don't and i purposely don't you understand i don't wear shapewear in my everyday life okay so I don't have to wear shapewear in every outfit on here, you know, to look put together, supposedly. Like, when I'm bringing you these clothes and I'm bringing you these try-ons, it's to bring you the real deal and to bring you what you're going to receive. And to let you know how the item will fit without shapewear and without a trainer and this, that, and a third. Um, somebody said something about a fashion overhaul with some two-piece sets. And it was like, oh, it's see-through. Why would you buy see-through stuff? When we buy this, we don't see that it's see-through. You understand? So when I get it and I try it on and you see that it's and you see that it's see-through, that's the whole point. <laughs> so you will know. Well, damn, maybe I don't need to buy this because it's see-through. Or damn, if I do buy this, I gotta wear something up under it. And I'm not gonna go out into the real world and wear it how I try it on on camera. Nine times out of ten, I'll say eight, seven times out of ten, I'm not gonna wear it the way you see me wear it. I'm gonna try it on. And let you guys see how you're going to get it when it comes in the mail. But, um, for instance, a two-piece set I just did a try-on haul for. Super see-through. I had a pair of leggings on underneath. Fashion Nova even post reposted the picture of me. And you can see my leggings peeking out from underneath. Because it was see-through. You know? Um, and I actually went out in that outfit. And I was like, I'm not wearing a see-through. But, anyways. Um, and there's a lot of people who quick to say just because they make it in your size doesn't mean it's made for you. Really? That make no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense. Leave me alone. <laughs> like, shut up. You know, um, it's certain things that I won't buy. Because I'd be like, I don't think I, I don't, I don't really fuck with that. You know, I don't think it's going to look nice on me. You understand? And... Who are you? Like, oh my god. Like, I be wanting to punch motherfuckers. Like, I'm so serious. Like... And I'm not even really that much of a violent person. I'm really chill. I'm really laid back. And I'm really nonchalant. You know. And I'm such an introvert. And yeah, I probably don't think that. But I'm really. I like to be to myself. Or to people around. Like. That I'm really close to. Like. I gotta be real comfortable with you. To be like. Super talkative. And super. You know. Just antsy and stuff. But anyways. Some people be making me want to punch them in the face. Whew. Over. Um. What do I want to talk about next? Overdressing. I get tired of people telling me I basically be overdressed. You know, they be like, why you wear that just to kind of class? Maybe because I got a life outside of class. Like, get the fuck out of here. You know? Um, I just feel like if 
somebody likes to look good, let them look good. I don't care if they're going to the dollar store. If they want to look good doing it, let them look good doing it. Why is that such a... Why? Why do you have to be so aggy? You know? Um, but I just... I mean, I really don't have much to say about that. But people be like, you know, and you dress up for everything, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, this took me 10 minutes to throw on a dress and a wig. I don't feel like I'm overdressed. I don't feel like I did too much. Like, I don't know. Anyways. Um, these hair reviews are killing me. And that's probably the last thing I want to talk about. Um, I am so backed up on hair reviews. So if you see like a flood of hair reviews, that's why. Um, but the thing about these hair reviews is like, these companies are really like annoying. Um, they start to rush you. They kind of tell you, don't say nothing bad about our products. And um, they kind of be like, really stingy you know like they want you to review this hair and stuff but they don't want to pay like they don't want to come out of pocket and i don't deal with those companies you know i don't have time because i'm putting in my hard work i'm taking and a lot of these companies think oh your life revolves around youtube like i'm not a full-time youtuber okay i am a full-time student i do make wigs now i started doing these closet sales um yeah and then I do YouTube. You know, this is not a full-time thing for me. Not yet, at least. And I don't know if it ever will be. I am a graphic designer. Like, you gotta understand that people... Some people don't just do YouTube. And I actually heard that a lot of advertisers left YouTube because of um, something controversial that went on. Controversial. But I'm not really sure what really happened. And I don't... I believe it's affecting a lot of people's pay. So a lot of people are going to be taking like breaks from YouTube or posting less because you know, they got to get back to their real life. But, um, uh, I feel like if you come on here and you do YouTube and it's not for the money, then the whole advertiser thing wouldn't really be that big of a deal. But it's understandable if you were living a certain lifestyle because of what you do on YouTube and then it's just all of a sudden taken away from you. You do have to go out there and do what you got to do. But um, I don't really do YouTube for the money, you know. My money has actually gone up and down, up and down. Um, I never know when I'm going to get paid and I really don't count on that, you know. Um, So yeah, that's that. But I'm just tired of these companies wanting the best reviews ever and they don't even have the best products ever or they don't want you to say anything bad no you're gonna get the fucking real deal and if you come to my channel and you say you watch my videos you know i'm not lying for your company and i'm not not lying for none of these companies you know i'm not selling my soul for a hair review a clothing company review I'm not selling my soul for that you know i'm not selling my morals for that that's dumb um and a lot of people like i said earlier come on here and be like, um, oh, I wish I was a YouTuber. Or people around me, even in my day to day life, oh, I need to be a YouTuber to get a YouTuber to get free shit. Then you don't need to be a YouTuber if that's all you want. You understand? Like, because first of all, you just starting out, you definitely not gonna get free shit. Like when I started out, I definitely had to buy all the stuff I was reviewing. I had to do everything, you know, out of pocket. YouTube wasn't paying me. First check was like what, five dollars, seventeen dollars, and I'm going up and up. It was first five dollars, then seventeen. I think it went to nineteen the next month. Like this shit ain't happen overnight. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that was kind of the update. I don't know if I had anything else. Um, my room is like coming along. It's really small, but it's really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna show it to you guys. It looks it's dirty right now. So I just recorded all them videos, but yeah, and like I and sometimes I am overwhelmed. So if I come to like some videos and I'm like kind of, I'm just doing a lot. You understand? Like I'm just trying to juggle a lot, and um, I'm not really down. More so tired, you know. Um, and typically in my videos, I'm not really that. Hey guys, I, you know, I'm not really that loud person i'm really chill um unless i'm really excited about something but for the most part i'm real chill 
But what was I about to say? Yeah. So it's not so much as me being down. It's just so much as me being tired and me trying to manage everything. And like I said, I'm just ready to be done with school because I feel like when I'm done with that, then I will have a lot of time to put into my craft when it comes to making wigs, when it comes to being a graphic designer, when it comes to party planning, event planning, interior design, when it comes to um, making YouTube videos and stuff like that. I feel like school takes up a lot of my time. Um, so, yeah, I'm just ready to finish. Thank you guys so much for joining. And um, if this video is up before then, the giveaway winners will be announced on April 15th, which is Saturday. Because a lot of people keep asking me, and I'm like, it's in the description though. But I'm happy to do this giveaway, and I'm happy to say thank you guys for over 80,000 subscribers. It's around April. I started my channel around last March, April, so it's like my one-year anniversary um, of YouTube. And it's been a journey. It's been a learning experience. It's been wonderful. It's been inspirational. It's amazing how much um, support you get, like I said, from strangers who don't even know you. Um, sometimes you get way more support from um, you guys. I get way more support from you guys than I do, you know, from the people closest to me. So, um, or family or friends or whatever you want to call it. So, I'm really thankful for that and it's amazing. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And this video is probably like 30 minutes long. But you wanted an update and you got one. <laughs> oh, I also asked on Snapchat, um... How much would you think of a, a unit, a wig unit, but it's glued in, not sewn in. The closure will be sewn down, but the tracks will be glued in. The hair will still be virgin. How much do you think that would cost? So I actually, um, and you got to keep in mind, the hair alone costs 150 to 250 So, yeah. Um, people try to shortchange you for a lot of work you do, and... People want good quality for the cheapest. And I'm like, I think I'm one of the cheapest um, wig makers that you will find. Because it's people who do sewing units just like this and sell them for $800. $800. I sell, my shit is half that price. You understand? So I'm definitely cutting people deals. And um, I know my time and effort goes into it. But I also want to make it affordable. Because I know how it feels to be a struggling college student. You understand? I know that feeling. I was that student for two, three, four years. So, um, yeah, you know. Thank you guys for joining. That's all I wanted to say. I'm done. I just did this little thing, this photo shoot, and I'm uh, I ain't even gonna give y'all the pictures. Y'all probably gonna see them on Instagram or Snapchat. So yeah, talk to y'all later.